Hey GFA TV, I'm Jacqueline Jones, back to talk to you about the art and music of Australian guitarist Phil Poughton. Whether it's visual or musical, artists draw inspiration from all aspects of life and are often influenced by other art forms. Phil Poughton was a guitarist that expressed himself not only through his playing, but through his art and compositions as well. He wrote many solo and chamber works for guitar and even experimented with electronic music. Hound's publishing company writes, his compositions reflect the influence of many styles, classical, jazz, rock, ambient and world music. His early influences include the music of Jimi Hendrix, the Beatles, Led Zeppelin, Miles Davis, Satie, Debussy. While his work continues to reflect a strong interest in art, mythology, and the environment. I spoke with Cara Caravitas from Moonstone Music about his work, and she said that, quote, many of Phil's peace titles were drawn from ancient cultures, such as Stele, Initiation, Bronze Apollo, From the Dreaming, which refers to the dream time of the indigenous Australians, even hope. To get a sense of his style, here's a short clip of me playing From the Dreaming with flute player Zixuan Yan. explore two of his paintings and one of his solo pieces. While Phil and Kara spent a month in Greece, they stayed a few days in Delphi, which was the home of the Oracle. Quote, when we first set foot on the ancient site, Phil said that the atmosphere and feeling he was trying to convey in the painting was exactly the same feeling he was experiencing in Delphi, even though the painting was painted decades before his visit. Here's my interpretation. This image represents Houghton's fleeting but powerful feeling which feels as if in motion. The use of colors and light give it an electrifying feeling against the dark blues. The use of curved lines with jagged edges puts the viewer in an ethereal atmosphere and the shapes are reminiscent of ancient vines in a futuristic space. I can picture a moving melodic passage that flows but perhaps has some dissonant characteristics. Notice the direction of the line, drawing your eye throughout the canvas, creating direction through color choices as well. This painting pairs well with his solo work, Kinkachu, I Love You. Evangelos Caravitas premiered this in 1998, and it was later recorded by John Williams and Carlos Spinell. Houghton writes, The Kinkachu, a mythical bird, once wounded in the spirit realm, heals and flies into the world. We can all appreciate that sentiment after a year in the pandemic. From the minute you view one of his scores, you can tell you have something special. Houghton handwrote all of his scores, includes very clear right hand and left hand fingerings, as well as creative expressive indications. Houghton asked the player to feel the tempo with a sense of weightlessness to hover and glow. In the beginning, the left hand's gliding first finger represents the bird starting softly but building as the song progresses and the bird heals. The campanella technique creates a dreamlike atmosphere with its vibrato and portamenti. Color contrasts and dynamic swells turn the simple melody into a journey. Another interesting fact is that the sixth string is tuned to F. Let's hear what it sounds like. The player must pay attention to timing their articulation in order to gain the desired effect. The mid-stroke Houghton requests can be created through extreme flexion of the tip joint. The tempo and time signature suggest feeling the pulse in one, but as rubato is applied, be sure to move around and base it off the agogic weight or the big beat. 
Counting out loud with a metronome can help you achieve control of rubato around the beat. In the second phrase, the left hand stabilizes and begins a new pattern. These stabilizing phrases occur in between the gliding ones and each grow as they exchange. In the climax of the piece, Houghton says, go for the passion. The next section, or the exhale, should flow like a river. I love how Houghton writes expressive indications like gently slowing silk. You can mimic this motion with the right hand as if you are pulling silk yourself. And to get that gorgeous sound, a tasto is an appropriate choice. At the end, the bird floats away healed. Houghton's music beautifully demonstrates his philosophies and views on the world. He leaves us with a positive message at the top of the score. To Lindell, to all my friends, life, love, and the whole mysterious, beautiful thing with an infinity symbol and a bird. The following painting continues on that surrealistic theme. Kara writes, Quote, the triangular monolith can probably be drawn directly from T Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. It made a huge impact on his young mind as it did on mine. Here's my interpretation. The impact of a musical note upon the world of man is so powerful it can turn lives upside down. Houghton creates a piercing image using lighting, line, and scale. It's composed of using simple subjects, a triangle, a silhouette, squares representing houses. But throughout the small scale, he creates the illusion of a powerful and otherworldly object, harsh lines against a curving storm. The fading around the triangle gives the shape a foreign aura. The lighting draws you to the light source, the figures being flung from their homes, and to the loner watching from the top. Based on the quote, this represents Houghton's strong reaction to the film and how it can disrupt and change our perspectives. I hope you enjoyed learning about Philip Houghton's music and art today, and I encourage you all to explore his wide range of guitar music. Take care. Mm -hmm.